Welcome. I am Adina Wancha, and I guide high achieving men and women create extraordinary lives and loving, ecstatic relationships. The intention of this podcast is to empower both men and women when it comes to life, dating, relationships, and intimacy. I believe that by both men and women being healthy, powerful, and loving, we can be in thriving romantic partnerships and create a better world together. If this is something you resonate with, then please keep listening. In this episode, we are talking about five things both men and women need to pay attention to when dating in order to discern if the person they are dating is healthy enough to be in a committed relationship and if that person would be a good fit for them. So let's get into it. The first thing, ladies, you need to observe if the man you are dating is ambitious, has a purpose and a plan for his life, and is working to achieve it. And gentlemen, you need to observe if the woman you are dating is intelligent, emotionally mature, and serious when it comes to commitment and having a family if you also want to have children. So let's go in more depth about this and start with the ladies. Ladies, one of the most important things in a man's life is whether he is ambitious, he has purpose and a plan for his life, and he is executing it. A man who has no idea what he wants to do with his life, doesn't have objectives, doesn't have a vision for what he wants to build in his life, and is not working to get what he wants, will amount to nothing and will also destroy your life if you choose to enter a relationship with him. Stay away from men who only talk about what they will do, but who haven't done much in their past and aren't doing much in their present either. There is a breed of men that don't have a job, don't make much more money, and if they make it, they spend it on useless things as video games, porn, gambling, partying, women. If you want a committed relationship or a family, then the man you choose needs to be mature, responsible, emotionally and financially stable, driven and ambitious, kind and caring. These should be non-negotiables. And let me give you some examples of men who haven't Dutch done much with their lives and how this has affected their wives. And I'm talking about people I personally know. So the first example, it's a man who was born in a good family and his father was a great provider but not such a good father because the mistake he made with his son was that he kept taking care of him and his needs. What happens when a father treats his son like a child, even though he's an adult, is that the son never becomes a man. He remains a boy who cannot take care of himself and his family. So this man I'm telling you about became an alcoholic. He wasn't very useful to his family or to the company he was working for. And as he got older, he became very sick because drinking every day doesn't make you healthier. It destroys you. So his wife was always the one who made sure the bills were paid, their children were taken care of, they had a house and food on the table. This woman spent her whole life taking care of her husband as if he were her child. Is this what you want to do with your life? Mother your husband? So ladies, even though a man is raised in a good family, it doesn't necessarily mean that he will become a responsible and reliable adult. I am going to say this again. 
run away from men who can't hold a job, are finan aren't financially stable, are in a lot of debt for which they have no plan to pay off, are spending their days wasting their time on stupid activities. These people can hardly take care of themselves, let alone you and your future children. And don't think that just because you have a good job and you can support yourself or even him financially, that you will be happy with him because you won't. I have never heard of a woman who married a man who was just sitting in front of a TV or a computer all day, who couldn't take care of his family, say that she was happy and in love with him after a couple of years in his relationship. You need to understand that to love someone, you need first to respect them. And you will lose respect for a man who doesn't behave in a manly way. And let me give you some other real life examples. In my first year of university, I rented a room in a house and I, as I didn't want to stay in a student dormitory. And the owners of this house were a couple. She was working and making a good amount of money and he was staying home because he had lost his job and he was refusing to do anything else other than the job he was trained in because other jobs were, and I quote, beneath him. Do you want to know what happened to this woman? Well, she started having severe health issues. She was unhappy and crying almost every day. They would fight because she would work 12, 14 hours every day and he would do nothing all day. Just watch TV and eat. He wasn't making much effort to find a job. Why? Because she was taking care of the expenses. Anyway, after a year, I moved out and later I found out they had gotten a divorce. So this woman got physically sick, was unhappy, even maybe depressed, got fat and didn't feel good about herself anymore. And eventually she got a divorce. And another example, this is someone uh, who is actually in my extended family. So both she and he work but he spends most of his money on an addiction he has. So she is the one who pays the bills, buys food, puts money aside for buying various things. And guess what? She has various health problems because she is always stressed about money and upset because he doesn't help her. And if you ask me, I believe these women would have been better without this man. So no matter how much you love working and how much money you make, don't make the mistake of committing to a man who doesn't provide for you in pragmatic ways, who doesn't protect you, who doesn't make you feel more safe, secure, and happier. The whole idea of a relationship is to take care of each other. He takes care of you and you take care of him. It needs to be reciprocal. Now, gentlemen, it's your turn. While I understand that physical and sexual attraction is very important for you, before committing to a woman, you need to assess this person's intelligence, character, and mental health because, yes, more and more women have mental health problems that remain unattended. And this is not to blame or shame anyone. I myself have had depression and anxiety. However, I took responsibility and healed them. Yes, as women, we are much more sensitive and our emotions can take a toll on us. That is why it is important to take care of our psycho-emotional well-being. Not to say that men shouldn't take care of their psycho-emotional well-being, because they definitely should. 
what I want to point out is that generally women are much more affected by the emo by their emotions than men. As a man, you have 10 to 15 times more testosterone than a woman. And this gives you the ability to put your emotions aside and do what you have to do. However, for women, it's harder to do this as our hormones prime us to be sensitive and empathic as we are the ones who can have babies and these babies need a lot of care, patience and attunement. That is why mothers have a sense of what their baby needs or can feel when something is wrong with the baby. And to illustrate the importance of a woman's mental health, I would like to give you an example. A few days ago, I was watching a video in which a man in his late 20s, early 30s, was being interviewed by a podcaster. And the reason why this man was being interviewed was because a few years ago, he had met a woman, started a relationship. She got pregnant after four months and shortly after she broke up with him. Although he wanted to do the manly thing and take responsibility for the baby, she didn't tell him when she would give birth so he can be present to the birth of his first child. And she never allowed to see the baby boy. So this man sued this woman asking for his parental rights. However, this is not the main problem. The main problem is that this woman thinks that this baby boy is actually a baby girl and that her son was born in the wrong body. Now, there's nothing that makes me angrier than this insanity that you can be born in the wrong body. While a, as a professional, I understand that there are people who suffer from gender dysphoria, meaning they don't feel like a man, although they are in a man's body, and they don't feel as a woman, although they are in a woman's body. And yes, these people need help. And as a society, we need to provide them access to first psychological care and also medical care to change their bodies so they look like the sex they feel they are. If, if after years of therapy, the conclusion mental professional reach is that this indeed will help this person have a normal life. I believe that only adults who have done some years of therapy, deep inner work and trauma healing, because yes, many of these people have had some sort of trauma in their childhood, should be allowed to get surgeries to change their bodies. I believe allowing children to get hormones and make irreversible changes to their bodies is insane and evil. I have no doubt that the people who are behind the movement that encourages children to take hormones and make irreversible changes to their bodies are plain evil. Because no one in their sane mind and soul would allow this considering that children are children. In what world is it forbidden for children to consume alcohol, but it's okay to encourage them to chop their bodies? And I, I say encourage because transgenderism is promoted among children as the solution to all their problems. Now, back to the story I was telling you. So whenever the boy is with his father, he insists he's a boy. He behaves in a boyish manner. He says himself that he's a boy. Or when the boy is with his mother, she sometimes makes him wear dresses because she thinks her boy is actually a girl. 
And also this man discovered that this woman put his son in dangerous situation and he even suffered some wounds for which he had to go to the hospital. This man is now fighting for the full custody of his child, which any sane person would do in this situation. So, gentlemen, be very careful who you allow in your life and especially who you have unprotected sex with because there are women out there who are mentally unstable and behave in crazy ways. And I am not talking about the fun type of crazy. No, this is the evil, insane type of crazy. So if you choose to have sex with a woman with who you are not in a relationship with, although I would not recommend this, at least use protection. And don't believe when a woman tells you that she is using birth control because some women don't. And there are plenty of men out there who have children with crazy women. And you do not want to have a child with one of these women. And if you do, I hope you will do the right thing and take care of your child. The world already has too many fatherless children. So don't be a coward and take responsibility for your actions. Also, you need to observe whether she is ready for commitment or she is still in a, in a lot of need of attention from men and interested more in partying than in creating a home and a family. A woman who still needs a lot of attention from men will seek it also when she gets into a relationship. Also, party girls don't make good wives. This is not to say that you shouldn't have fun with your future partner. This is to say that a woman needs to be mature in order to be a good wife. Moreover, choose a woman who is educated and intelligent. Because no matter how attracted you are to her physically and how good the sex is, you will need to make important decision with this person. And you will have to take her out in the world. And I don't think you want to be ashamed of her when she opens her mouth. And another thing, gentlemen, I want you to remember this. You can't make any woman happy. But you can make the right woman for you happier. If a woman cannot make herself happy, it will be impossible for you to make her happy. If a woman doesn't genu genuinely like you and isn't content with what you can offer her, you are signing up for a life of misery. Because not only will she be bitter and hostile, but she will also destroy you by not taking care of you and your needs, not encouraging you, and even putting you down and not appreciating you. Stop pursuing women who don't value and appreciate you. Have self-respect and only pursue women who respond to you in a positive manner. And this doesn't mean that a woman needs to do everything you say. It means that she behaves in a way through which she shows that she likes you. She wants to spend time with you. She values your opinions, respects what you do, appreciates who you are and what you can give her. Point number two in five things both men and women need to pay attention to when dating. What is his or her view on marriage? Here are some questions you can ask yourself as well as the person you are dating. Why do you want to get married? What does marriage mean to you? What will you do if at some point you will no longer feel in love or attracted to your partner? What's your perspective on divorce? What would make you get a divorce? 
I have never been married, so I cannot speak from my experience. However, from my observations and studies, I can say that marriage is not necessarily easy. Yes, you can create a healthy and mutually fulfilling marriage, but that requires work which both partners need to put in. I believe marriage has two main functions. One, spiritual evolution. And two, the perpetuation of the human species. I believe that marriage is a path to spiritual evolution because it gets the best and the worst out of you. It's not so much about the other person. At, at the same time, it's a lot about the other person. And here is what I mean with this. It's not so much about the other person because you are in control of your life. So you can choose who you marry, what behaviors you accept and which you don't how you treat yourself, and how you allow your partner to treat you. You can put boundaries and set standards. You can name your needs and desires. And it's a lot about the other person because marriage is about being in service of the other person. It means taking care of them and supporting them to be healthier, happier, and more fulfilled. It means sometimes doing things you are not necessarily happy about. In a good marriage, you give what your partner needs and you receive what you need. This is not to say that your partner is your only source of happiness and fulfillment because they are not. As you are the one responsible first for your own happiness and fulfillment. However, your partner is a very important source of well-being and harmony. And that is why it's important for you to choose the right partner for you. If you want to get married because you think that this is going to solve all your problems, you will going to be in for a treat. And yes, I'm being sarcastic. When you spend every day of your life with another person there will be moments when you will get angry you will get bored you will fight you will cry you will want to smack them you will want to leave them there will be rough periods through which you will have to get through so you cannot let momentarily emotions decide the faith of your marriage there's a thing I observed with people from older generations. They didn't really take divorce into account. And of course, if the relationship is abusive, then please get out of it. However, you need to understand that marriage exists mostly to ensure the perpetual of our species. And here is what I mean by this. Children need safety stability, and many emotional and financial resources to become healthy and productive adults. If you don't want to have children, you don't really need to get married. You can if you want, but the purpose of marriage is not your happiness and sexual fulfillment as an individual. It's the family and the well-being of children. Evolutionarily speaking, the children who didn't have both their parents in their life didn't survive because life was tough and people had more chances to survive when they stuck together as a couple and as a tribe. And look what is happening now in the world with so many single mothers. Children from single homes will always have a deficit. A father is not only a sperm donor. He is as important for the child as the mother is. The mother and the father fulfill different roles. The mother nurtures and helps the child get the soft skills like empathy, compassion, kindness, emotional stability. And the father makes sure the child gets the discipline, skills, 
and the education the child needs to survive and become a functional adult in the world. Saying children don't need a father is like saying you don't need your right hand because you have your left hand. It makes no sense. Children need both present and involved mothers and fathers. And divorce affects children deeply, especially younger children. And to understand this, I want you to imagine this. You are three years old. Your mommy and daddy are your whole world. You depend on them for food, shelter, emotional regulation, health, well-being, and happiness. And now imagine that one of them is no longer with you and that you just lost half of your world. How are you feeling? Are you happy or sad about it? As adults, we forget that once we were children too and that we weren't as independent as we are today. I, for one, cannot imagine my life without my father. I learned so many things from him, and he has always supported me. I couldn't have become the person I am today if I had been raised only by my mother. So if you want to have children, you need to choose the person you will have them with wisely. Because marriage is not created to make you happy and sexually fulfilled. Although this happens when you work for it. Marriage is created to turn children into healthy, powerful, and capable adults. Who can also do the same with their children. And our species can survive. Family is essential to our society. As a species, we are created to be together. And of course, there will always be people who will be in extremes, meaning they will either be single or in polyamorous relationships. However, they are more the exception, not the rule. Marriage is a commitment and a covenant, meaning it's a contract between you and your spouse to stay together for better or for worse through sickness and in health and just like any other contract for example the contract for buying a house or your employment contract it has both responsibilities and benefits and it also has consequences if the terms of the contract are breached. So here are some of the things to think about when you are dating. And I recommend you to write this down and answer these questions afterwards. One, what do you want to be responsible for in your marriage? For example, do you want to be the one who takes care of the children? Do you want to be the one who provides for your family? Do you want to be the one who makes sure something gets repaired when it's broken? Do you want to be the one who cooks for your family? Be specific. Two, what do you want your spouse to be responsible for in your marriage? And does the person you are dating want to take on these responsibilities? Three, how can you contribute to making your spouse's life better? What qualities, skills, accomplishments, competencies, and experience you have that can enhance this person's life? Three, Sorry, four, how do you want your spouse to contribute to making your life better? Why do you need this person in your life? Be specific. Five, 
what will be the consequences if you or the other person violates the terms of your contract? Six. When something traumatic and hard happens, for example, one of your parents dies, your child has a health problem, one of you loses their job, can you both agree to get help from a third party if you can deal with the situation yourselves? And here is why I'm asking this. If you are to spend 30, 40, 50 years with another person, shit will happen. What will decide the fate of your marriage is how you will deal with it. And so many people get divorced because they don't get help when hard things occur. And by help, I mean individual therapy or coaching, couples therapy or coaching, getting in touch with people who have been through something similar and have managed to get out of it. Do not discard the wisdom someone who has gone through challenges has medical help asking family members and friends for help and asking wise family members and friends for help because this word wise makes a lot of difference when you're going through something hard you need wise people's guidance and advice not dumb people's Getting help doesn't mean that you are incapable or stupid. It simply means that you do not have the necessary information and skills to do something because you didn't study that specific thing and someone who has studied it or has experience with it can guide you through it. As people, we are not created to know everything about everything. In the same way you take your car to a mechanic when it has a problem, you need to take yourself to a specialist when you have a problem or when something is not working in your life. What I want you to understand from this is, are you and is also the person, the other person, Capable of taking responsibility for your own challenges, flaws, and weaknesses. Because if you are not, don't even bother getting married, as you'll most likely get a divorce. People who have successful marriages are responsible for themselves first, meaning they are aware both of their qualities and their flaws, and do their best to bring more of their qualities in their relationship and less of their flaws. Now, we are humans, we will mess up. What matters is repairing and not repeating the mistakes. Because if you break a glass once, basically you can glue it back. But if you break it five times, you might as well take it to recycling because you won't be able to use it anymore. Point number three in things both men and women need to pay attention to when dating. What's, here, what's his or her relationship history? No one goes into a relationship as a clean slate. We are all influenced by our past, our childhood, our adolescence, all our previous relationships and our previous rejections. We are all wounded in some way, some more and some less. No one is perfect. But the good thing is that you don't need to be perfect to be in a good relationship. However, you do need to take responsibility for your own life and behaviors if you want to be in a good relationship. So what I want you to pay attention to when dating is how this person past still affects them. And here are some things you can look at. What is their relationship with their family? How do they get along with their parents? Are their parents running their life? 
are they estranged from their parents? If so, what is the reason for that? How do they talk about their previous relationships and partners? In what kind of relationships have they been into? Long-term ones or short-term ones? How were they treated in those relationships and how did they treat their partners? Do they have previous partners that are still present in their life? If so, what's their relationship with them? Why have their previous relationships ended? If they have been married before, why has their marriage ended? And have they taken responsibility for their part in it? In most cases, people will behave, will behave the same in their next relationship as they did in their previous one. So that is why it's important to know their history. However, there are also people who understood that they were doing something that wasn't working. So they took self-responsibility and they've done the work to change themselves. Unfortunately, these people are not that many. But if you're listening to this, I am sure that you want to become a better human and husband or wife. And as a person who has been through this transformational process, I can tell you that doing this work is not easy but it's totally worth it because you can change partners, but until you don't change yourself, you will have the same problems just with different partners. So when dating, check what they have done to improve their relationship skills. Have they read books, got therapy, coaching, listen to experts? Have they taken responsibility for their past mistakes? Why do they think they can be in a good relationship now? And as a note, the guidance you get from professionals can be very different from the information you get from social media creators. Because not all the people you see online actually know what they're talking about. So pay attention who you're listening to. Successful marriages are formed by people who desire to grow and evolve separately and together because these are the people who can take responsibility for themselves and fix their own problems. And we all have flaws. But the important thing is, are you and is the other person willing to do the work required to become better humans and partners? Point number four of things you need to pay attention to when dating. Does the other person have robust values and morals? Think of someone's values as a house foundation. And think of their morals, which I define as the capacity to discern between good and bad and act in a considerate manner, as the pillars of this house. We all know that a house with a good resistance structure will last longer in time, will not be so much affected by earthquakes and other natural disasters, that you will feel safe in it and it will not crumble at a little shake. Your job will, when dating is to discern if this person has good values and morals. Now, Every person has made mistakes and has their weaknesses. No one is perfect. However, do they do their best to act in a healthy and compassionate manner towards other people and towards you? To discern if a person behaves in a kind manner, you need to observe how this person speaks, how they behave, and if there is a discrepancy from what they say and what they do. For example, someone says they will call you. Do they call you? If someone says they will do something for you, do they keep their promise? If someone says that they don't smoke, do they really don't smoke? 
or do they smell like cigarettes? When dating, you won't have access to too much information about this person. Until 50 years ago, people generally married people they knew from their childhood or whom their relatives knew and could vouch for. However, today we live in very big cities and we don't know these people. That is why it's important to slow down and get to know this person by asking them questions, observing their behavior, talking to their family members and friends. And here are some general good qualities in any human being. Kindness, respect, compassion, self-awareness, self-control, self-responsibility, desire to be helpful, desire to grow and evolve. So when you speak to this person and you go out with them, observe if from what they tell you and how they behave, they live their life according to good values or they seem the type of person who would do anything to get what they want. Because someone unscrupulous won't be able to respect and love you. And committing to this type of person will bring destruction and suffering into your life. And point number five from five things you need to pay attention to when dating. Does he or she have any addictions? And if so, what are these addictions? I believe that we are all addicts and anything in this world can become an addiction. Addiction exists on an intensity, intensity spectrum. And there are beneficial and harmful addictions. Addiction is something you do every day or very often and in a big quantity. For example, we are all addicted to food. However, the difference between a beneficial and a harmful addiction is made by what you eat. Do you eat natural foods rich in prote proteins and healthy fats or do you eat fast foods and a lot of sugar? Do you eat all day long or only when you are hungry? Do you eat a big quantity or only how much you need to in order to feel sati satiated? Having a glass of wine when you go out can relax you. However, alcohol becomes problematic when you drink it every day and in a high quantity. Playing video games can be fun if you do it once in a while. It becomes a problem when you do it every day for hours. Working is absolutely necessary. However, it becomes problematic when you work 12 or 14 hours every day for months and years. Exercising is something all people should do to maintain their health, but it becomes a problem when you work out every day for a few hours unless you are training yourself to go to the Olympics. Most people you will meet, and even yourself, will have at least one low-intensity addiction. Meaning that this thing does not cause a problem in their life. And an example of this would be someone who smokes a few cigarettes a day, who drinks a glass of wine every two days, who stays one hour per day on social media, who watches porn a couple of times a week. What you want to stay away from are the people who have a medium or high intensity level addiction, meaning they consume a lot of their substance or they do that behavior very often and it, that behavior takes a lot of their time, money, and energy. For example, someone who has a medium level of addiction is someone who gambles 
30% of their income every month, who watches porn almost daily, who smokes a pack of cigarettes per day, who eats one fast food meal every day, who works 12 hours every day. These people have a problem, but they are still functional, meaning they still have jobs, families, money, and are relatively healthy. Someone who has a high intensity level of addiction would be someone who is dysfunctional, meaning they cannot hold a job anymore, don't have money, have destroyed their relationships, are in bad health, and have even started committing crimes. And do not think that if you get married, they will change their habits. Because you loving them and they loving you doesn't heal addictions. An addiction is ultimately a very rehearsed habit. And a habit is one of the hardest things to change. And it doesn't happen if the person who has the bad habit doesn't decide they want to change and doesn't do the hard work. It takes months and even years to change a bad habit and it requires a lot of work. You do not want to commit to someone who has a medium or high intensity level of addiction because these people aren't healthy enough for a relationship. An addiction creates a lot of problems in someone's life and if you are their partners, you will have problems too. No matter how much you like someone, stop dating them if they have an addiction. You will not be happy with them. And this is something I can give you in writing. How to know if someone has a serious addiction? Observe what they talk about. People will generally say, I do this every day. So listen to what they say on dates. Two, observe their behavior. Do they smoke? two cigarettes per hour? Do they look very tired or lacking energy? Do they have mood swings? Generally, addicts have mood swings, especially mood swings that don't match what's happening in the moment. Are they secretive? For example, they tell you they have something to do or somewhere to go, but they don't tell you with who and where. Are they in bad physical and mental health? Do they have problems with money? An addict will not have lots of money because they will spend most of it on their addiction. Do they have a bad relationship with their family or friends? It's very hard for addicts to have healthy relationships because they can no longer connect with someone else as their whole being becomes preoccupied with their addiction. Three. Ask them about their life and notice if they have a direction they are going or they just seem lost. Addicts can only think to their short-term survival. They do not have a plan for their life as their mind is obsessed with the substance or the action they are addicted to. And four, listen to your intuition. We generally sense the people who have serious addictions. So listen to your gut. And don't think that because you are a kind and loving person, you can change someone. Because you can't. I'm going to say this again. Stay away from people who have addictions. They will not make good partners or parents. Addictions ruin someone's physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual health. You cannot be in a healthy relationship with someone who is not healthy. And if you're listening to this and you realize that you have some light or medium intensity addictions and you want to be a free person because addiction is like a cage, here is what I can share with you that helped me heal my light to medium level shopping addiction. One. What sucks in your life? Two, what are you unhappy about? 
Three, what emptiness are you trying to fill? Four, what pain are you trying to avoid feeling? Five, when are you consum consuming that substance or doing that action? Notice how you feel before engaging into that habit. Do you feel positive and pleasant emotions or do you feel more negative or unpleasant emotions? People use unhealthy substances or habits to feel good because they are not happy with the rest of their life. So to heal an addiction, you need to create more peace, happiness and fulfillment in your life by choosing to do healthier things. And I said choosing because you do have a choice. People aren't born addicted to smoking, fast food or porn. They use them as a coping mechanism because they don't know how to handle unpleasant emotions and how to create pleasant emotions. The first step in fixing any problem is recognizing that you have a problem. And having a problem doesn't make you bad, it makes you human. There is no point in blaming and shaming yourself for certain things that you consume or you do, which is you know that is not good for you. However, you do need to take responsibility for your actions and decide to get help. And some of us are more prone to addiction than others. The good news is that if you're prone to addictions, you can decide to become addicted to beneficial habits. For example, I am prone to addictions and I'm using this in a positive way by becoming addicted to creating the best version of myself, by becoming addicted to doing good in the world, by becoming addicted to living my best life. And if, you, if I can do this, you can do it too because I am not special. What I did was to take responsibility for my flaw and I decided I'm going to convert this flaw into a positive thing. And for those of you who are ready to go to the next level and resonate with me and you want to work together, there are currently two ways. A free one by downloading my five embodiment practices, which you can find on my website. The package for ladies is called Magnetic Woman and the package for gentlemen is called Confident Men. You can find the links in the description below. And a paid one by entering my one-to-one -one coaching container where we will work together on you getting clear on your needs and desires when it comes to a long-term relationship healing your past wounds so you attract a healthy person, dating from a place of empowerment instead of neediness, mastering your sexuality, getting the skills you need to create a happy and fulfilling marriage. Thank you for listening to this episode. And if you found it helpful, please share it with one or more friends. And if you are listening to this on YouTube, Please like the video. It helps me a lot with the algorithm. I appreciate your time and energy. And I hope to meet you again in my next episode. Bye.